again. Oh, sorry, yeah. Okay, so you answered the question from Larry. Yeah, Correct. you'll just have to guess what I said, Heather. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, this is weird. I can't see. Does your chat start over? Yeah, it really it okay. did. All right, I'll, um, I'll, I'll read the ones um, that are next in line up until the point when, when you start to see new ones. And, and also a reminder, anyone is feel, feel free to raise your hand if, you, if you'd rather just um, vocalize your question. Um, Kendra asks, um, how many applications did you receive for your current inaugural funded projects, the mosaics and the murals, and how many were ultimately funded? Okay, yeah, so the, um, the murals program, we received um, 17 submissions and we're still figuring in the process of figuring out how many will be awarded. At a minimum, it's two for each of the programs we're looking to create at least two um, projects through each, through murals and through mosaics. We're still figuring that out because we're still, um, we haven't received all that, we haven't finished reviewing the final mural proposals. On the mosaic side, we received 13 submissions and five, uh, there are five finalists that were selected to develop full proposals. And there will be one artist who was selected from those five to do two or more or more mosaic projects. Great. Um, next question, do you have to live in the city to submit a proposal? And then a similar question after that, do all artists taking part? In this project have to be city residents. I can I can start that one off. Um, there's not a like an absolute black and white answer to that question, but I think it's important to sort of return to the spirit of this program and, and what our goals are around investing in art in the city and creating more art in the city, but also in investing in artists that, that live in the city in particular, underrepresented groups. Um, to that's that's one of the things that we we want to try and invest in more through this program. Um, that being said, we recognize that there are some arts organizations uh, or even artists that don't live in the city, but do the majority of their work in the city, or maybe they don't live in the city, but their office is in the city. Um, so there's, you know, there's some leeway there, or, uh, you know, at least things for us to consider. Um, but we do have a, a, a system where, you know, additional weighting of scores is given to those that, that have a, a strong city presence. Um, Heather, do you want to add to that at all? No, I think you covered it. That's okay. great. Okay. Um, do you need MWB certification to apply as an individual for MWB funding? I'm not sure I understand that. Fully. I don't know what MWB funding is. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I added the word funding in and I did not intend to. Um, okay. So I, I meant the the certification. So um, in other words, I mentioned I heard you mention earlier uh, that you had to have that not for profit status in order to request that uh, certification. You, but my question is, are you can we we can still submit as individuals without that certification, correct? You do not need to have any licensing or certification to apply for Arts Bloom funding. I didn't think so, but I just wanted to double yeah. check. Thank and you. Then, I'm sorry for that confusing. Oh, no problem. Sorry. I know it gets it gets confusing fast because we're talking about all these different things, right? Um, but just to be clear, um, nonprofits are not eligible for MWBE certification. That's like a side note. That's like separate from Arts Bloom, right? But as a side right. note. Um, because MWBE is for businesses. It's about certification of businesses. Oh, and, that's a, okay. and that's a state program, by the way. That's not something the city has decided. That's something the state dictates. Right. Okay. That's very helpful. I appreciate your help. Thank you. No sure. problem. And, and Heather, just a follow-up question to that, because I'm not as familiar as you are, but um, the the MWB certification process, if I, if I recall, is a process that takes a certain amount of time that would not necessarily be completed in time for the deadline for Arts Bloom, right? Right. Yeah. I if, think if somebody uh, wanted to pursue that, to go ahead and do it, and you should do it. But it's right. not you're not going to have it done in time for this deadline. But that doesn't That's, disqualify you either. Right. Exactly. We, as a city policy, we have the bonus bonus points for um, folks located in Rochester and for businesses that are MWBE certified. Um, as well as those that have workforces that meet our uh, workforce goals 
in terms of percentage of minorities um, or women employed. Um, but those aren't deal breakers, right? Those are goals that the city has. I think the city also acknowledges that, especially in this case where we're really looking to support um, small arts organizations and independent artists, we recognize that um, that's not, um, it's a little counter. You know, the, those goals are sometimes the MWB certification in, in general um, is counter to what we're looking to do here. Oh, another question in terms of what's not allowed, can you define physical art? In other words, uh, can a medium that is not paint, as an example, be eligible if it is removable? Right, so I think that the primary, when we're talking about um, temporary physical art, one of our key kind of um, descriptors is um, any, any physical art that's gonna need a permanent attachment or foundation is not eligible, right? So if the thing that you're proposing needs to be attached to the ground in some way or needs some structural support, that's an indicator that it's not eligible for this funding. But if the person who wrote that question wants to get more specific with us, um, please feel free. I don't know who wrote that, that question. Gianna? Yeah, um, I'm happy to reword that. Um, Go for it. For example, like things that come to mind are yarn bombing or or something that's removable but doesn't leave a trace, but it's yeah. not paint, it's physical. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, Gretchen asks, um, ap the application says resumes are required. Is it resumes of arts organization applying only or do you need resumes of every artist? Um, in working on this project. And it sounds like she might have a large group of maybe 15 or more folks that would be working on this project. So we, would we be requiring resumes for all those folks or just more about the organization? So um, I really thought we actually tried to not say resumes were required with this because we're, more, we're most interested in people giving us a narrative of their experience. And then I believe the way we framed it was describe your qualifications and experience and if you wanna tell us something extra, then please feel free to submit resumes. But we're looking for you to talk about the experience of the people that will be involved in the project. Um, certainly the organ, if it's an organization, that's great to know what the organization does, but I think we're most interested in the people, whether it be in the organization or the artists outside the organization and their experience and what they're bringing to the table. So the folks that we would be working with in the funding um, is, is really who, we're interested in learning most about. Does that answer the question? Pretty much, but if not, I have your email. Okay, yeah, feel free to follow up. Feel free. Thanks, Gretchen. Um, so Kathleen asks, to piggyback on Tara's question, could there be a free concert with a donation jar? Um, I, so this this to me is kind of a, an extension of the question about um, can there be artists selling some of their work at an event that Arts Bloom supports? So off the cuff, I wanna say yes, but I wanna kind of verify that with Johanna and Kevin. Like, I think that this is similar to that question, right? Yeah. If there's people selling things at an event that this is supporting, is that okay? And to me, that's similar. This is a free thing, but if people have the resources to maybe give a little extra, to the performers or the organization organizing it, then maybe that's okay. What do you guys think? Yeah, generally I would agree. As long as there's not too heavily a, a guilt trip on people. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if it's, if it's like has the appearance that this activity or this event is like exclusively about raising yeah. money for the organization. Yeah. yeah. Not saying that it would absolutely disqualify, but it, it, wouldn't, it probably wouldn't score really well. Um, if that's the nature of it. So, but if you're talking about a donation jar, or sales of a little bit of merch here and there, I, it's probably not an issue. No, and again, I would ask that you just describe that or identify that in, in your proposal so we can we can talk about it. Yeah. A raffle, maybe a raffle. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Tara asks, is this money connected to NISCA funding at all? Um, that, that's New York State Council on the Arts. No, it's not. Uh, this is exclusively um, city funds um, through the city budget dedicated to this. Um, but that being said, uh, somebody might have an idea 
uh, that is eligible for Arts Bloom that is also getting funding through NISCA or any other source really. Um, and that's that doesn't disqualify you. We would just need you to explain that in, in your in your proposal and show your overall budget and this money's coming from here and this money's coming from there, that sort of thing. Um, and then last one in the chat from Ishmael is as far as public benefit, what would be the threshold for low cost if the proposal will not be free to the public? Would a pay what you can option circumvent this? So um, I think, you know, a, a pay what you can option is, is interesting, is an interesting idea and maybe falls in line with what we were talking about in terms of, you know, a donation jar. The There's not, I think I gave the examples of, you know, our assessment of low cost because it's not really a clear um, binary, yes is ex acceptable, no, this is not for cost. Like we're not set, we're not setting a thing saying it can't cost more than $15 for performing arts, you know, for performance because one, because the the uh, the programming that we're going to be getting um, proposals for are so it's such a wide variety that it's hard to do that for across the board. But also because, as I mentioned, it's going to be a case by case analysis. We're going to be looking at what the cost is, what the location is, what the time is, who is this serving, what is the outcome? Is this a program that's helping educate youth in playing instruments? Or is this, a, you know, like what is the, so it's gonna be an analysis, a project by project analysis, which I know isn't a great answer, but um, but hopefully that helps you get thinking about how to make the proposal. Um, Kathleen, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I think we have time for maybe just the two questions, the two more questions that are in the chat, and yeah. then we should wrap up. Okay, Kathleen asks, um, I represent a community choir. Would you need bio information about everyone or just the conductor, artistic director and accompanist? I, I think just the primary folks that are that are coordinating the activity would be sufficient. We wouldn't need bios for, for everyone. And, and, and that would go true for any sort of large activity that's planned performance or otherwise. Um, you can just focus on the primary folks that would be coordinating and, and administering um, that activity. Um, do you require slash favor projects that pay artists for their participation. That's an interesting question. Um, we don't require it. We don't require it, but one of the goals of Arts Bloom is to expand um, economic opportunities for artists in Rochester. So certainly that's going to be a factor. And then the, the last question that we have, and then I think we need to wrap up is, um, does the city anticipate, sorry, um, does the city anticipate considering proposals below the funding level requested? That is to say, if an applicant requests 20,000, it, is it evaluated solely on that amount or would the city consider funding that project at the five or $10,000 level? So that's a really good question. And I think um, we want to, as much as possible, look at and award folks for what they have been, what they're requesting. But we acknowledge that this is an interesting, um, we have $100,000 and we might not, if we, once we have the high scores, it might be more than a hundred or there might be some kind of, um, we might have to look at that and see if, if we want to award more than what we have and uh, then we have to look at that. This is a complicated, we basically only like complicated projects here at City <laughs> Planning. Um, I want to do, I want to circle back to the, uh, is this, you know, because a couple of folks said, let's always pay artists and it should be a requirement, which I, I think that that's, uh, of course, a goal for us. There is some scenario I can see in which someone is saying that they want to uh, create exposure for artists. I don't know. There's just, there's other, uh, no, blue, blue is like, no, I will, never mind. I retract that statement. It's a goal for Arts Bloom. Let's not, let's not um, go any further with that. Yeah, but I, I think you can see in the in the comments there and in the support for that. Uh, so if you are considering submitting an a proposal with artists and you're not necessarily intending to pay for them, just um, you know you could you could see the strong support behind that, and and we value that as well. So I, I think you can imagine that it would uh, be a stronger proposal if you're showing how you're going to be paying the artists that are that are involved. 
Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, we're going to be, again, the next thing is May 15th is the deadline for additional questions. We're going to be creating the document with all questions from this meeting and received otherwise and making a Q&A document that will circulate and post online by the 19th. Good luck to you all. I want to say we're very, very excited about this and we've had such a good response from it. It just confirms that the city is doing the right thing in really creating this non-capital art program. So thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you everybody for coming today and, and a special thank you to Wanya for joining us. It's always great to see you. He's always helping out with our AC3 meetings. Um, so thanks for helping out with interpretation. And uh, yeah, submit any further questions to Heather and uh, be sure to check out the, the website for more information, including the, the actual RFP itself, which should have all the details that you need. So great to see you all and have a great day.